hello and welcome back and today I want to answer a very simple question that has seemingly arrived a lot more in the comments in recent videos and that is why is it I can't just take my NAS drive and directly connect USB? Why is it if I do that with my NAS drive I can't access the data yet if I connect it to my router or switch over there then I can apparently access it. What stops this happening? A lot of users have bought their first NAS after getting away from the cloud, and although they've set it up to be accessed remotely, think they can put it on the table at some point if they're in an emergency and directly access the data, and they can't. Now, there are exceptions that we'll talk about later on, but why is it you can't use a NAS in the same way you might use a simple two quid USB drive or an enclosure. Well, let's talk. In the case of the PC or Mac or whatever system you are interfacing with, and that includes mobile devices as well, these are known as hosts. They manage everything. If you're at a dinner party, they know where everything is, the circulation, the back and the forth. They are in charge of that. Now, in the case of a connected USB device, if we go for a non-NAS device and we look at just this enclosure, or this USB drive, these are considered clients. These can only realistically manage data by what they're being told by in the case of the host. They aren't in charge of things, they merely follow orders. Read and write orders in different directions, but they follow orders. Now these, more often than not, are found in USB 3. That's USB 3.0, USB 3.1, USB 3.2, and variants like that. This logic does extend, by the way, to USB 4 drives as well. But we'll get to USB 4 and Thunderbolt later on. But ultimately, when it comes to a NAS, a NAS is also designed to be a host, much like your PC or Mac system. So the result is, when you connect your host PC or Mac system to your host NAS system, the result is you have two devices that are used to telling the other device what to do and neither one of them can take orders. That's an incredible oversimplification, but that's the problem. Now, in recent years, this has changed because some NAS devices that arrived as you know as early as 2018-19 from brands like QNAP with Thunderbolt connectivity that allow you to directly connect via Thunderbolt connectivity point to point. Now they charged a lot of money for that. Now some of that money was because of the rarity market value and also the research and development that had gone into that process. Now, how was that possible? Well, it was possible via two main reasons. Number one, it was using Thunderbolt. At that point, Thunderbolt 3, but also now Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5, which has also arrived at the same time by no coincidence because of development with Intel alongside USB 4 and no doubt USB 5 down the road. Now, these allowed for more flexibility and management of the data going back and forth. The controllers that are required, the Thunderbolt controller and the USB controllers inside, allow for creating, and we're gonna be oversimplifying a little bit here, but a virtual network in the middle, a virtual network switch. Now what that means is that unlike in the scenario when I was connecting this PC to this dumb DAS box here, or when I was trying to connect to a NAS when both of them thought they were in charge, what happens is you have a Thunderbolt or USB 4 NAS that when it connects between these two devices, at this end, there is a virtual switch being created, not unlike a network switch. This virtual switch in the middle is managing the data back and forth in the same way that when your PC is connecting with a NAS over the network, that requires a switch in the middle. It requires a router to manage the exchange of packets. And that allows two devices to be the hosts with the switch in the middle managing the back and forth. That is how it allows for that connectivity. Now, this is a gross oversimplification, but anyone that's ever connected their PC or Mac system towards 
perhaps a QNAT Thunderbolt system, a Zimmer OS Thunderbolt system, a Minus Forum N5 with USB 4 connectivity, will notice that in the network adapters of your PC, for example, or the Mac, you will see a new one appear. There'll be your normal network connections, your Wi-Fi card, and a brand new one appears as soon as you directly connect with a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 3, 4, or 5 device. That's the virtual network switch doing its job. But it doesn't stop there, because other users have highlighted that even though modern DIY NAS solutions and OS3 NAS solutions have rocked out at a significant price drop compared to the likes of QNAP and their Thunderbolt series, as good news as all that is, lots of these Thunderbolt connected NAS devices never provide the performance that a standard DAS connected drive will give, DAS or direct attached storage. For example, going back to this adapter here, this is a USB 4 enclosure. If I stick an M.2 NVMe SSD inside there, and I connect this, this can easily give me 3000 megabytes per second if I directly connect it via USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. However, if I take that same SSD out of this device and stick it inside a NAS device that has USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 network connectivity with that network switch, I will be lucky if I get 1000 megabytes per second. What exactly is happening that I am losing two thirds of my performance? Well, in simple terms, we could just say overhead. But the real reality is from system to system, there's actually multiple factors that is bringing down that performance. Some of them a lot more obvious than others. A NAS, for example, may be doing other things. The file system that you've built the storage into, Perhaps the drive is being read and written to internally, which can affect the overhead. Also, the network protocol when you're transferring the data back and forth. Are you using SMB, FTP? Are you using NFA? It's just so many different kinds of file service you could be using and file services and the storage on there, as well as are you using EXT4, BTRFS, ZFS, all of these add up to significant friction, significant hurdles, and ultimately add to a larger overhead. And further still, if you look at your PC or Mac, or a NAS that has USB 4 or Thunderbolt connectivity, the amount of internal hardware layout, otherwise known as PCIe lanes, that have been allocated to the USB 4 or Thunderbolt connection will also similarly reduce the amount of bandwidth there. That same reduction in PCIe lanes also extends to the SSDs inside because the CPUs that go inside a NAS system only have a finite number of these PCIe lanes that they can allocate to storage, allocate to network connectivity, PCIe upgrades, and M.2 NVMe slots inside. So generally, they have to be quite efficient about how they're being laid out. And more often than not, many USB 4 devices, uh, the, uh, NAS devices that have got USB 4 ports, are actually on a Gen 3 times 4 or Gen 4 times 1 lane. That only gives them 20 gigabit or around 1.5 to 1.6 gigabytes per second maximum throughput in the real world. And once you start adding some of those reductions and the overhead we discussed, that's why the SSD that in this simple brainless enclosure will give you 3000 megabytes per second via direct connectivity with a NAS can be reduced significantly. Now again, I'm not suggesting a NAS is worse than this dumb enclosure because this thing's got bells and whistles coming out of the wazoo in what it can do. But ultimately, bringing us back round to the subject of today's video, that's why connecting via standard USB is not as straightforward or even possible in some cases as many think. Right now, at the time of recording, unless the NAS has Thunderbolt 3, 4 or 5, or has USB 4 or higher, you are not able to directly connect to it. And anyone that's about to highlight that QNAP box from a few years ago that had USB 5 gig, USB 3.2 Gen 1 connectivity there, look at the performance. It was reduced to less than one 
gigabit per second there. It was around 80 to 100 megabytes. So it was possible, but the overhead was horrific. And they slowly phased out that as well due to, I assume, stability. But this has been why I can't just use USB to connect my NAS. I hope you found this video helpful. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.